Today we're delving back into D&D. We're looking at D&D lore, more specifically mimics. So you delve in a dungeon and the rogue tells a joke. The warrior laughs, the healer laughs, the table in the corner laughs. That's when you know you've got a mimic. Now this was actually an idea suggested by a user. Um, I'll flash his name up now, it's MC Matter 100 So thank you for that. And if any of you other guys have any D&D lore videos or any videos in general, drop them in the comments below and I'm more than happy to have a look at them next. But let's get right into it. So what exactly is a mimic? So I did a little research and apparently it first appeared in the Monster Manual in 1977. The book described mimics as subterranean creatures which can't stand the sight of sun and they can mimic stone and wood. So they were sort of limited in their abilities early on. So obviously with wood, stone, it doesn't like sunlight. There's not a lot of places it could be. It's normally in a dungeon and it's normally going to be something like a door, a table, rope, just random objects hidden around a dungeon. But obviously if you're an adventurer you're not going to know that. You're not automatically going to think there's going to be a mimic in here. You can't always think like that so it's always a shock factor when you add one to a campaign and it's sort of an iconic creature for D&D. When you do, let's say you go to sit on the chair and the chair's a mimic, when you do actually sit on it it will create an adhesive so it's, you stick to it, or it sticks to you more like. And normally, as well as sticking to you, it's going to bludgeon you for a ton of damage as well. Now it does go on to say a Mimic's hide is grey in colour. I didn't think there was any sort of description of what a Mimic actually looked like. I knew it always took form, so it's interesting that they actually give it a singular form, rather than it's whatever it wants to be at that time. A Mimic is also amorphous though, so it's able to alter its external look at any time, it's able to bend, twist itself to look and feel like whatever it wants to. And that's one of the terrifying things about this, it could literally be anywhere. The phone you're holding to watch just now, Mimic. The bed you're laid on, a Mimic. At any point you could be swallowed or attacked or it's just such a cool unique creature. Articles back that up saying it has very sensitive eye spots they're referred to. So it can sort of feel vibrations, heat, light, that sort of thing. This is kind of why bright light blinds a mimic and one of the best abilities you can use against it is anything like, anything with radiant. Um, I mean, mages can do everything, so I'm sure they can come up with something clever. But anything you can do to create light in a dungeon is always good anyway. You probably have torches, anything like that. Absolute must against these guys. Kind of a cool story, in the Dungeon Magazine issue 19, there was a story called The Vanishing Village, where not only objects were mimics, whole houses were mimics, so you would enter them and you would actually be entering the monster. Which is taking it to an extreme, but it's a really unique take on mimics. Now over the different editions and expansions of D&D, it has changed, has been great in mimics, has been all different variations. What I wanted to do was take to Reddit, uh, forums, anything I could find and get some cool stories of what you guys have been doing with Mimics. So I just want to run over some ideas that I found over at RD&D on Reddit. One was a throne, he said, that was enjoyable as they assumed it was special and fought over who got to sit on it. That's some kind of criminal genius you would see Chris Perkins or someone come up with. Uh, the second guy said, altar, the cleric rushed ahead of the rogue to look at it. <laughs> That's kind of cool, um, using sort of class specific ideas is always neat. Third, uh, a jewellery box aka Baby Mimic used a first level that was a shock to the veteran players they were not expecting it. Using Baby or Greater or different variations of Mimics is always really cool. Because they expect Mimics they'll probably guess ropes, things like that, tables, chairs. Choosing objects out of the ordinary is what makes these so special. The fourth one says, I didn't do this, but in a game I played, an entire tower was a mimic. <laughs> now that goes back to sort of saying what I was saying before about buildings and sort of bigger, greater, larger mimics. And then he's gone on to say, tower mimic was a great one shot. I had some villains chase a villager into a lone tower in the middle of a field. The heroes go to save the day, but find odd things happening in the tower. Eventually they think it's haunted and can't seem to escape. It reveals itself to be a living being and they are already inside being digested. I can just imagine that scenario where sort of the tower is shaking and things are moving and they're not sure what to expect. They expect maybe a big monster crashing around and it turns out they're actually inside the big monster. But possibly my favourite, imagine a large empty room in a dungeon. It has columns and torches and the like. It's just strangely empty. 
On one wall is a large ornate mirror reflecting the room, but with a large pile of treasure in the centre. On closer examination you notice the party isn't reflected in the mirror, and the motion of the torches is a little jittery. By the time the whole party is standing around examining the strange mirror, the mirror fades to black, grows teeth around the frame, and jumps on the party. And I think that's what a good mimic should do, it should scare you of the object you use. So whatever you put into your dungeons, try and make it something every day. So maybe it's dice, maybe it's, it could be, maybe it's books, maybe it's the player handbook. It could be anything. Get creative with it because that's one of the coolest things about this creature. But enough about stories I found. Let me hear your best mimic story in the comments below. And until next time, see ya.